So this golden rooster posture, if we look at the text for it, similar to all the other texts, so it's really terse and it's a one image that gives you some ideas how the movement's going to be applied, but doesn't really give you a lot of detail. So the text for this is covering and peeking out from behind the shield or behind the pie is a good way to begin. So you're just kind of like peeking, you know, checking and peeking is a good way to begin. If the spear is over your head, hide behind the pie. And if you look at the illustration, the soldier is really pushed in deep as he hides behind the pie and is hiding his saber low like this. So if the spear is over your head, hide under the pie. Step forward like the wind. And it, of course, it says this in other movements. That often sounds a little bit funny to me. I mean, it sounds like, of course, I know I got to move fast, but I think it's stressing again here when you're facing a weapon that's much longer than yours, you have to move really, you know, really swiftly in. So like the wind, you got to move in fast. And it says it's hard for the opponent to distinguish between the head and the pie, the shield. I kind of always kind of question that. It's, I don't think I really look like this and my head is not that big. So I don't know why it's hard for him to distinguish it, but that's what Chi Ji Guan says in his manual. Then the last lines are the Tao cuts down, pie presses down together, and it's hard to defend against this. So after, of course, the first, the only illustration you have is something like this, where it's, you're ducking and protecting your head and your body is really well forward this way. After that, the Tao has to come down with the pie at the same time pressing down together and it's hard to defend against them. So we've got to kind of put all this together to understand how it's moving. If, we're, if it's stepping forward, fast like the wind, so after we protect the head, we're moving in, and the sword and shield are working together. Obviously, if the sword, excuse me, if the shield has come up, you've risen it here to protect yourself, and then it's going to press down. So it's not hard to keep it moving around this way after you're there, and you come down and press with a saber at the same time. So that's the movement we're gonna look at. So we're only looking at this one movement, the golden rooster protecting the head, or one posture, but that one in itself really makes a formation because it's, that incorporates several movements, of course, when we're moving and facing the spear. Now, the first thing we wanna think about is how can that spear attack me, right? If we're in line, so I'm here facing the spearman this way, probably a little bit close here, we just can barely get ourselves on camera. I'm facing the spear this way, and of course remember, I have my spearman. And I might not be lined up with him directly, I might be off a little bit. We don't know when our two lines come together whether or not I'm gonna be directly opposite him or I'm gonna be a little bit more over this way, and it's going to change as men fall and as we move around on the battlefield and you know, just tripping and falling over bushes and rocks and dead bodies, it's hard to keep this our line straight, but we're going to assume that we're here facing him. Now, also, you have to keep in mind that they're probably a little bit close here just for the sake of staying on camera, but keep in mind, we're looking at, okay, there's just the two of us here, but Mark's side would also have men with shields and sabers. So if they're here, right, one is, one could be a very, it could be in a tight formation where I'm, I'm almost touching him here, or I may be on the other side here as well. There should be one on each side. I'm in here pretty close. My job, of course, is to protect him so that he can attack. There's not a lot of movements that he can do. So any sort of spear forms you've seen or might practice where the, move, the spear is swung around, right, spun around this way, like by the end, or big movements, clearly he can't use those kind of movements. Even in a loose shield wall, if I'm over here and... It's this kind of diff distance between us where, okay, I got a, the length of my saber between us. Still, as I'm pressing forward, there's only so much room that he has. So one of the things he ways he's going to, to attack me, of course, the obvious way is he would come in with a thrust and I can protect here and come underneath this way. I'm rolling it a little bit. I'm not looking to hit it. Here, of course, we got a tennis ball on there. It's mostly so I don't mess up my nice looking shield. But as he comes in, I want to be rolling it so that it's rolling off. I'm not trying to take it, so I have a little bit of rolling movement. The other thing he can do though, is he can come down, I won't move my shield this time, he can come down and hit down, right? And that makes a lot of sense. It's probably how he's going to have to strike a lot of times, right? If I'm engaged 
with somebody over here, right, maybe another guy with a shield, maybe another spear is coming at me. He can, from that angle, hit me in the side of the head or maybe even come over top and strike into my collarbone. Right? So even if I have some padding on, a real sharp strike with that spearhead into my collarbone, probably going to cause me to falter, lose my balance, and then whoever is closest is giving me a final blow or another blow. So when he's coming at you, it's not always a thrust. It's not all, it couldn't be that, and I may have to raise my shield a little bit higher. But in either case, I'm looking to roll it this way. So your first movement is you're ready. Think of your, your basic ready stance, and I'm going to push in and roll and cover and drop my head a little bit. And a good way to know how, because it's hard. You can't, I can't see what he's seeing, right? And I'm, I'm covering my, my uh, eyes here a little bit, or actually completely. If your hand is at your eye level, if you're looking at the back of your hand, then you should be okay. Right? If your eyes are here, and I'm looking at the, there, you can see my head is a little bit exposed. So if you see your own hand at eye level, then you know you're covered, right? You see it's above my head now. So even if he's hitting down, because I'm rolling and moving in, ready to bring my saber in, then I'm gonna be protected, okay? So let's just look at that a few times. So over here, he starts to come in, and I'm rolling in, right? And I'm seeing in, I'm sinking a little bit, but I'm not sinking a lot, and I'm seeing my hand. Ready? So he comes in, and I'm gonna roll. So even if he's coming down on my head, I'm protected, and I'm starting to move in. I don't wanna stay back, because what's, what's the spearman looking to do? Get me to move my shield out of the way so he can strike me or poke me with a, with a not with a tennis ball, but with a nice uh, steel spear tip. So if he gets me to raise and I'm back, what's exposed? Boom, right away, he can come to my leg, right? So I don't want to give him that freedom of movement. I want to do the exact opposite. So as he comes in, I'm pressing in, right away in, right? And then from here, actually, let's just do this a few times, press in. So you're there, and I might even steal in a half step, cheat in a half step, why not? I'm here, boom, I'm pressing in. And already, you see, I start to become at a distance where I can start to threaten that front hand just with that little half step.